girls, so I'm starting off by priming my eyes with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in this shade Original, and I'm just applying that all over my lid of my eye, up until my eyebrow. This is just going to make your shadow stay on all day long. Now as you can see, I've already done one of my eyes here. I wanted to kind of show you guys what the look's going to look like. And now I'm going in with this MAC eyeshadow called Retrospec. It's just this really pretty shimmery gold color. It's perfect for a holiday party. And I'm applying that just with my finger all over my eyelid. Uh, I will go back and apply a little bit in, more in a minute. But for now, I think I did about two layers. I went back again with my finger and put some more from the eyeshadow and put it back on my eyelid, kind of just building the color up. Now I'm going in with my e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. Something similar to this that you could use would be MAC Fix Plus, and I'm spraying that onto a flat synthetic brush and dipping it into the eyeshadow. This is really just going to make it more metallic-y than it originally was when I only put it on with my finger. It might be kind of hard to tell on the camera, but I promise you it's just going to make it, your eyes pop even more. And now I'm going in with the e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush in the color Luster from my Steel in the Lights palette, which is just kind of a sheer black color that has gold kind of shimmer in it. So I'm applying that in the outer corner of my eye kind of in like a V-like motion and it right now it's not looking like it's black at all but you definitely have to build this color because like I said it is more of a sheer tone and I'm kind of doing the V and then bringing it up a little bit higher um, about halfway through my eye but not pressing very hard. Then I'm just taking any sort of blending brush and kind of mixing the colors back and forth. With this little blending brush, I'm adding the color Ebony, which is a matte black, just to darken it up. And then right here, I'm adding the color Bliss in that area, just to act as a transition color between that darker black, luster color, and retrospect. This is really just going to blend everything together. Then I'm going to go with my Maybelline Master Precise by iStudio uh, Felt Tip Liner and line my eyes. Now I am going to use two different types of liner because I wasn't fully happy with this one to do the wing. Um, but right now I'm just going right along that lash line. And originally I didn't put any in the inner corner. I thought that's the look I was going for, but later on you'll see I did apply some. So I'm just going along that line, creating a, obviously, a very smooth line. And then I'm going in with my Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in the shade Black is Black. And I'm drawing a line upward and then going to connect that line back into the original line I drew along my eyelashes and fill it in. Then I'm going in with my Maybelline Big Great Lash Mascara and giving them a coat of mascara so they don't look so shimmery from the eyeshadow. I lightly filled in my brows off camera and then I'm going in with my Clinique All About Eyes Concealer to kind of give them a little more shape. I know this is supposed to be for your under eye area but I use it all over my face. So I'm just taking my Sony Kashuk Concealer Brush and kind of tracing the outlines of my eyebrows. I I feel like this just makes them look a little bit more sharp and defined. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here on both of my eyebrows. I lightly filled in my brows off camera and now with my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Milk, I'm following kind of that arch of my eyebrow right underneath it and this is going to provide a nice matte white highlight. I, we already are using a ton of like glittery kind of shades with the retrospect and the luster and stuff, so I figured having a matte highlight would be perfect. To make this look more dramatic, I'm going in with my Ardell False Eyelashes in the number 105 in my Duo Eyelash Adhesive in the Clear White shade. And I'm just going to be applying my eyelashes here. Today, applying them was such a struggle. You guys, you know, you have those days too. So I applied them with my fingers and then went in with a pair of angled tweezers to just kind of fix where I wanted them exactly to be placed. Here I'm showing you, I did get them on and I'm going in with that same Great Lash Mascara and just applying a little bit more to blend the fake lashes and my real ones together. And I'm taking some more of that gel eyeliner and just going right along that lash line to kind of cover up the band of the fake lashes. With this random Lancome pencil eyeliner, I'm just applying a little bit of black eyeliner right along my lower lash line. Because the uh, upper eyelid and stuff is already so intense, I didn't want to add a ton of black to my bottom lashes, so I just put a little bit, cleaned it up with some makeup remover, and now I'm applying that same Great Lash Mascara just to my bottom lashes. You can put a lot more mascara on your bottom lashes if you want. Do what looks best on you, and then I'm just cleaning up with a Q-tip and some makeup remover, and now I'm going in with 
with my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and my Clinique Super Balanced Makeup Foundation. And I'm applying this in stippling motions and then to blend everything out, I'm using circular motions with my brush. This is what I've found to be the best way to really get that more flawless look with your foundation, especially with this brush. So I'm applying that everywhere it needs to go and I will make sure to blend down into my neck as well as I think I might have even done my ears. And um, this is just the best way to make sure that you don't have any spots that don't have foundation that creates a color difference because I will be putting my hair up later for this look. So you really want everything to be really blended in together. To highlight, I'm going in with my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Under Eye Treatment Concealer and I'm applying that on my nose, on my chin, underneath my eyes in triangular motions and on my forehead. This is just going to kind of highlight those areas where you would naturally get light on your face and kind of get rid of any dark circles that you have. And I'm using a damp beauty blender to kind of just blend this in. You want to make sure with your beauty blender, one, that it's damp and two, that you're really dabbing. You're not like tugging or rubbing. You just want to kind of dab it and that will blend it together. It might take a little bit longer than you want it to, but it will blend it together. To make sure that my makeup doesn't move around on my face throughout the day, I'm going to apply my Laura Mercier Setting Powder, which is just a translucent powder, using my Real Techniques Setting Brush. For powder, I'm using my Real Techniques Powder Brush with my Clinique Stay Matte Powder, and I think it's in the shade 03 Beige. Everything will be linked down below, as always, and I'm just applying that all over my face in no particular way, so I'm just going to speed through this. I will tell you real quick, though, to make sure, once again, that you blend down into your neck and especially your ears when you're going to be wearing your hair up. To give my face some warmth, I'm going in with my MAC Bronzing Powder in the shade Golden. It kind of has little gold flecks in it, but not really anything that's majorly noticeable on the face. You can't even really see them. It just gives you that really bronzy look. So I'm applying this underneath my cheekbones here, on, and I will do that on both sides of my face. This is just really going to define your face and give it a little more dimension versus just being flat. I'm not going to go in with any blush today because I really want the focus to be on my eyes and later on on my lips. So I didn't want even more color on my face, so that's why I'm using the bronzing powder here just to give me a little bit of color. And now I'm making sure to go right along my forehead. And you'll see me kind of do this almost shape of like a three. I'm starting at my forehead, going, touching my temple, and then going down and following my jawline. It's kind of like a three shape. To line my lips to make sure that my lipstick doesn't go all over the place, I'm using this Estee Lauder Lip Defining Pencil in the shade Wineberry. I think this came with a bonus and they don't actually have it. You can buy it online on places like Amazon and stuff, but any sort of wine colored lip pencil that you have is going to work for this look. So I'm lining that bottom line and I'm terrible at lining my lips like you can tell absolutely terrible but we'll go in later with some concealer and fix it all up and it'll look beautiful so don't even worry about it um maybe you guys are a lot better at lining your lips than I am I hope you are and I'm doing the top line as well but I'm not gonna fill these in then I'm going in with this Clinique lipstick called a different grape they do sell this one I checked and I'm applying that all over the lips, top and bottom. To touch this up, I'm going in with a little bit of my foundation, barely any, with my concealer brush and just tracing the outline of my lips. I apologize, I'm kind of looking away on the side for this. I really wanted to make sure that I accurately trace them and didn't get any of the foundation on to my lipstick. But this is a great trick to really just make your lips look flawless when using a dark lipstick. I'm using the trusty finger trick to make sure that I don't have any lipstick that will get on my teeth. And here I'm just going to kind of let my hair down and show you the makeup look and in a minute we'll go on to hair. So 
So I'm bending down and collecting all my hair with my hand up into a ponytail and then I'm using this round brush. It has those really kind of harsh bristles on it. I don't know what this brush is called. Um, I know they also make like flat versions of it so you don't have to use a round one. And I feel like these kind of bristles are the best way to get really, really smooth hair, which is what we want for this sock bun that we're going to do. Yes, we're doing a sock bun. So I'm putting my hair just into a ponytail, making sure it's really tight so my hair doesn't fall down throughout the night. You could even go in and use a second ponytail if you need to. So I'm putting one of these kind of foamy sock bun things, shaper things, whatever you want to call them, and I'm tucking my hair into it. This kind of is the struggle for this hairdo, but once you get all the hair at the bottom of your hair in, <laughs> then it will work. So just start tucking the hair in and you want to make sure that you get all those pieces into the bun. And as you can see here, I'm having a struggle. It falls out. So don't worry, you're probably going to experience this too. But just keep trying to tuck them in and eventually you're going to get them almost all tucked in. And then you, I'm just going to step back here to show you, you're just going to start rolling this. So yeah, some pieces are falling out in the back, but we can tuck those in later. So just roll, roll, roll it until you get that nice sock bun on top of your head. If you don't like it, of course, you can go back and fix it. See that one hair is hanging out in the back? So just take it and wrap it around the base of the sock bun. Because I don't really want this to be a messy look, I'm spraying my Trez 2 Ultra Fine Mist Spray, which is the number 3 by Tresemme, just to kind of make all those little hairs stick down. And then I'm just kind of showing you this is what it looks like. <laughs> 